Today's video has been sponsored by Honey. Hello my peeps, welcome back to another episode of angering 75% of the audience, regardless of the outcome. It's the ultimate pot pie showdown. Think of this one like the crunch wrap versus, where the construction and overall methodology of these might be pretty similar, but the fillings and absurdity levels of each one of these could not be any more different. We're gonna start pretty classic with Wolfgang Puck's chicken pot pie and then stray further and further from the light of sanity with Chef John from Food Wishes Lobster Pot Pies, good old Tasty's Bacon Mac and Cheese Pot Pie, and then to round it all off, Mythical Chef Josh's Chicken and Waffles Pot Pie. Shoutouts to Tim and his seven-year-old who suggested I should try some good Mythical Morning recipes over on my last video. That's what sparked the inspiration today, but let's get right into this one. At least, unlike some of those Chef's Club recipes, these all look like they would taste good. There's no hot dog Lincoln Log Tower to ruin our day, at least these should all be edible. But before I can get into any of these recipes, I gotta give a shout out to my friends over at Honey. Honey is the number one shopping tool in America and my new online savings sidekick. Anytime you access any website, Honey is scouring the internet and automatically searching for promo codes so you don't have to. And as soon as it detects one, Honey will automatically apply it to your products and let you know how much money you saved. You may be surprised with just how many websites Honey works on, some of which I'm sure you're already using. Use it on food delivery or new shoes and clothes. The possibilities are truly endless here. Now in addition to my flannel obsession, I also love hoodies. I'm always looking to add to my collection. So the fact that I could start saving money on each new purchase, including this one, where I was able to save six bucks is a pretty big deal. And the best part of all of this is it is completely free when you click the link in the top line of the description and go to joinhoney.com slash Seymour. It's one of the best ways to support the channel as well. And of course, thank you Honey for sponsoring today's video. As I mentioned, up first today is Wolfgang Puck with his traditional chicken pot pie. And for that, you will want to grab some flour and salt, some chicken stock and heavy cream, puff pastry sheets and some rotisserie chicken, frozen peas and cayenne pepper, black pepper, fresh carrots, butter, an egg and some Yukon Gold potatoes. If you couldn't already guess, we are in for a long one today, peeps. I did spare myself by avoiding Tasty's 101 chicken pot pie. I figured the rest of this would be enough work, and that one takes days of making your own stock, roasting your own chicken, making your own puff pastry dough. I think we can reserve that one for its own video one day. But this one's gonna start much easier than that. It's a very classic recipe. It's gonna be full of chopped carrots and potatoes, lots of those frozen peas, a little bit of heavy cream to enrich this whole thing. And obviously, the video just says shredded chicken, so by all means use whatever kind of chicken, turkey, leftovers, or otherwise protein that you wanna use. The famous $5 rotisserie chicken from the grocery store just seemed perfect for this application. One by one, into your pot, all of the ingredients go, obviously starting with a roux to thicken this guy up. The only thing I am doing differently from the video is excluding the black truffles, but do me a favor, raise your hand if you would've spent the $150 for a black truffle to put in your pot pie if you made this. Nobody's hand is up out there, good. That's what I figured. After all, this is not a Joshua Weissman or Nick DiGiovanni thousand dollar budget video. We try to keep things pretty grounded over here and boil egg omelets in chip bags. If you couldn't tell, I have not stopped thinking about that last Chef Club video. If you haven't watched it, please do. I'll leave it in the description. But apparently it's left an everlasting imprint on me. Let's get back on topic though. I rolled some puff pastry out. I egg washed it, baked this at 400 degrees for about a half hour until everything was nice, golden, crispy. And this looks delicious. It's almost exactly what I picture when somebody says chicken pot pie. So let's give it a shot. Puff pastry is so cool. I don't know like who discovered it or how it was invented, but look, it rose like three inches. Mm. I like this recipe and the way he presents it a lot because it's very intuitive. You have to taste for the salt level. You've got to test to make sure your vegetables are done. The chicken is gonna only be as good as what you put in there. I forgot to mention, I only put half of the chicken that they called for, I think they said two pounds, but as I was dumping it in, it looked like way too much. I used closer to one pound, and I also accidentally went a little too heavy with the cayenne, and it is reflected here. I mean, look at that. Listen to that crispy, crunchy flake. Super delicious, perfect on a cold, rainy day like it is right now, and the perfect place to start for this video. 
Next up, we've got some mini lobster pot pies by Chef John of Food Wishes. One of the absolute food OGs here on YouTube, if you are unfamiliar. And for his, you will need some flour and butter, some sherry and salt, heavy cream and puff pastry sheets, a lobster tail and tomato paste, clam juice, some black pepper, paprika, cayenne pepper, fresh tarragon, celery, carrots, an egg, a lemon, and some more potatoes. This one starts very similarly to the last one. We're gonna chop up some vegetables, very small. We're gonna start with the roux, cook off a little tomato paste, and build our base from that. But where this one gets pretty interesting is with the lobster. It does pain me to chop this giant, beautiful lobster tail up a little bit. It's kind of the same energy as slicing up a filet mignon to put in a sandwich. But besides the obvious reason of having to cut these down for more manageable pieces, we're gonna chop up the shell, roast that in some butter, and infuse that with the clam juice as an extra little flavor bomb. By the way, what? is clam juice. Whenever I hear somebody say that, I just envision somebody sitting there in a factory like squeezing clams. I know that's dumb and very wrong, but if you know how it's made, please enlighten me. I would say the only tricky part about this one is trying to get everything to cook properly in the same vessel because it's gonna go in a very hot oven for 20 minutes. I feel like this one is very susceptible to overcooking the lobster or the vegetables or both. But we are gonna try our best to avoid that today. And once I had my filling ready to go, I plopped it in my ramekins. Don't forget to chop a little vent in your puff pastry as well as cover those in egg wash. And they're gonna get baked at 425 degrees for about 20 minutes. Now I could be wrong, but I don't think I've had anything like this with this much fresh tarragon, a combination of clam juice and heavy cream. It sounds like it'll be a little bit interesting. Maybe something you'd find as an appetizer at some bougie Manhattan restaurant that I would probably walk right past and continue on my way to some gaudy chain restaurant like Applebee's or Margaritaville. But these guys were looking pretty good out of the oven. The puff pastry browned up nicely. That filling was bubbling away. I'm gonna let this cool for a couple minutes and then try out recipe number two. There is such an unbelievably strong, like sweet, rich lobster smell coming off of this. It almost smells like lobster candy. I know that sounds weird, but oh yeah, this is gonna singe every single part of my mouth and I don't care. Oh, this is delicious. It is seasoned so well throughout. I imagine that clam juice really helps. It's trending a little bit too heavy on the tarragon, I would say. It kind of overpowers a lot of the other flavors. But it's lobster and vegetables in this super, like, juicy, soupy liquid. You cannot go wrong with that. Also, maybe something that's overlooked in a lot of recipes is the portion size that they recommend. The whole premise of this was that it was like a mini lobster pot pie, and it's kind of perfect. It's so rich and intense that I'm kind of like nearing the end of how much I would want, and I'm basically halfway through it, so it's perfect. I enjoyed eating this one about the same as the last one, I would say, but simply because lobster is better than chicken, this will take the top spot for now. Third today, and the official beginning of treading into the murky waters, we've got Tasty and their bacon mac and cheese pot pie. I grabbed some milk and salt, some elbow macaroni and garlic powder, some cheddar and pepper jack slices of cheese and pizza dough, Italian seasoning and low moisture mozzarella, a block of cheddar to shred, some butter and some bacon. If you have been around the channel for a long time now and have a better memory than I do, you might remember when Fetus David did this recipe about five years ago. I only rediscovered that when I was searching for some unique pot pie recipes to do. And I think my skills have improved a little bit since that day, so I figured I would give it another crack. Even though I did like it in the video, it looked a little little dry and crumbly, but I said it tasted pretty good overall. But let's see if it comes out any better today. I shredded up my two kinds of cheeses. You need a cup of both, the mozzarella and the cheddar. You're gonna need eight slices of cheese that'll go on the bottom of the baking bowl. You gotta chop up your bacon, that's gonna line the cheese. As I am describing all these steps, it occurred to me that this has gotta be one of the most American recipes on the internet. Only somebody from like, Southern America would use this much cheese and carbs in one recipe. Although Chef's Club is from France, so maybe we're rubbing off on the rest of the world now. 
And I guess Chef Club is the new Rachel Ray because I can't stop talking about them. You cook the pasta in three cups of milk. I elected to add a few splashes of water just because this was reducing really fast. I added in what seems like an absurd amount of salt and pepper. Two teaspoons is quite a bit of pepper for this amount of pasta. I just remembered I have a physical this week with my doctor and when he asks how my diet and overall health has been recently. I don't think there are words to describe some of the shit I've had to eat on this channel. Yeah man, things have been pretty normal, pretty average for me. I had a bacon mac and cheese with four cups of cheese in it the other day. Before that, I made a hot dog tower for dinner, and then before that, a deep fried mozzarella Dorito donut. So yeah, things have been pretty normal over here. Gather around everybody, feast your eyes on this tasty relic from six years ago. It's safe to say that old school BuzzFeed tasty recipes are pretty unmatched, so let's give this one a shot. Today was not the ideal day to run out of lactates. How do you even approach something like this? Oh my gosh. To nobody's surprise, this tastes amazing. It tastes straight like cheese and salt and bacon and slightly overcooked pasta. If you don't like pepper, pull back on what they call for in the recipe. It is very pepper forward, but I like it. It's kind of like a cacio e pepe. Oh, or should I say, cacio e pepe. The things that become trends on TikTok, I swear. There's not a whole lot else to say about this. The pasta actually stayed surprisingly moist. I feel like my experience with most internet recipe uh, baked macaroni and cheeses as they become very dry. But this is good. I think the little bit of water I added while I was cooking helped a lot. Is it better than the other two? I don't think so. And also, is it really even a pot pie? It's just a bowl <laughs> with macaroni and cheese and bacon and cheese in it. Between the gigantic portion of this thing, the presentation of it, the pizza dough too, it's just maybe barely a pot pie. I don't know though. You guys are free to debate that in the comments. But as of right now, this is the rankings. <laughs> Lastly, and most unholy, we've got Mythical Chef Josh and his chicken and waffles pot pie, as seen on the Will It Pot Pie episode of Good Mythical Morning. To make it, grab some sugar and lots of eggs, some buttermilk and some pie dough, all-purpose flour and butter, chicken stock, Louisiana hot sauce, salt and maple syrup, chicken breasts, cornstarch, black pepper and oregano, Vanilla extract, paprika, cayenne pepper, and baking soda, as well as baking powder, ground mustard, and dried marjoram. Even though I am on day two and hour 18, probably, of filming, this is by far the most involved recipe yet. We gotta whip up a waffle batter with the buttermilk and sugar, maple syrup, melted butter, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And then, of course, use that to whip up some big old homemade waffles, and as this is the morning of day two, I'm pretty hungry, so you can bet your butt I will be making an extra one to eat. We also have to make a homemade chicken maple gravy, which sounds bizarre, and that's because it is. And then after that, fry up some chicken nuggets that will be stuffed on the inside, and roll out some pie dough that will encase 75% of our pot pies. Now while I'm working on all of that, I just wanna say, to the mythical team, if any of you are watching this, I love you guys dearly. However, I have never in all my years of doing these videos seen as many continuity errors between the recipe video and the description in my entire life. I'd say 50% of the measurements of each ingredient is different. There's no mention of marjoram in the description, even though he puts it clearly in the video. And in the description, there is maple butter and oregano listed, even though there's not a single word mentioned of those ingredients in the video. What even is maple butter? Is that like butter infused with maple syrup? Like, I don't think I've even ever heard of that. With that all being said, I tried to copy the recipe that he used in the video exactly, or at least as close as I could get. Oh, and the description calls for an entire bottle of hot sauce. I felt like I was trying to decode hieroglyphics reading through that. Although, that's kind of how I feel when watching a lot of Josh's videos too, so maybe it's not a mistake. Anyways, I got my gravy looking thick and beautiful. I was working on my chicken, frying that at 375 for three to four minutes. I was moving through all of these steps pretty easily until the very end where I encountered a minor hiccup. The size of the waffles that my iron makes are much, much smaller than the size of the springform pans that I have. I feel like it would look pretty silly if I tried to fill one of these giant pans and then only cover about 
80% of the top with the waffle. So instead, I had the thought to fully pop potify these things and whip out my cute little tiny springform pans. I can just chop up the pie dough to fit inside each one, I can whip up a few more waffles and then cut them down into circles, and that's much closer to a single serve pot pie anyway, so it kind of works out perfectly. But finally, after what seemed like an eternity, it is time to assemble our fourth and final iteration. I gave the pans a spritz of nonstick spray, even though he didn't do it, I just wanted to ensure that the pie dough would not stick. I baked them at 400 degrees for about 25 minutes, halfway through that. I realized I'm an idiot and forgot to cover them with foil. The waffles got a little dark already, but no big deal. And after a very long two days, I don't know why these recipes took me as long as they did. We have arrived to the infamous chicken and waffle pot pie. How will it stack up against the three other competitors? Let's find out. Wow, is all I have to say about that. Cheers, everybody, to, uh, this video so far. There's nothing in here. Oh, holy I also just realized we're supposed to take this out of the pan and defeat the purpose otherwise. What? Wow. Look at this thing. Are you kidding me? Mm. It took me a couple minutes there to get used to how sweet this gravy is. When you see a chicken gravy like that, when it's that thick and dark, you expect it to be very salty. This could not be any different. It is sweet, it is thick, it tastes just like a thickened syrup. And it is unreal, super creative, super delicious with this chicken. I don't love how mushy the exterior of the chicken is, like obviously all the fried bits kind of absorbed all that gravy and got sogged out. But the flavors, when you get a piece of everything together, it is something I've never experienced before. This has gotta be one of the most creative recipes I've ever seen while still staying somewhat practical. Is it better than everything else today? I just sat here in silence for 10 minutes trying to figure out what I was gonna rank these. Uh, the answer is no. It just barely slides into second, I think. And the reason is because if I were to ever make this again, I would make all the components separate and keep them separate. Keep the gravy on the side, have bigger pieces of chicken, just dip it in the gravy with little pieces of waffle. I think this is a cool idea, but filling all the blank space in here is just too much gravy. The exterior of the chicken is soggy, but the flavors and the creativity of this are awesome. Like I said, if this was separate, uh, I think this would be in first place. Although, not a pot pie, but you get the point. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, leave me a big old like. Thank you to Honey for making today's video possible. Let me know what you would like to see in the next Giant versus episode down in the comments below. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you do not already. And other than that, have a fantastic weekend, and I will see you right back here next time. Peace! Chefing in that kitchen, flexing how we live in. Yeah. yeah, I'm cooking up that fire around David's kitchen. They were calling me a lie, now nah, they be wishing that they could have seen the fire around David's kitchen. Yeah, we cooking up that rah rah, yeah, yeah. Now we eating all the fries out in David's kitchen. Yeah, we living super size, ah, yeah.